Hi, welcome back to Refined Wellness. My name is Megan Taylor. I'm a functional medicine practitioner, and I help you simplify healing by getting to the root cause of your symptoms in your God-designed body. In this video, we're gonna talk about some reasons why someone would experience acid reflux. If you haven't watched the first video, this will be part two to my previous video, so make sure you go ahead and go back and watch that before watching this one. In this video, we're gonna explore acid reflux and some reasons why your LES, which is that lower esophageal sphincter, would start to spasm and lead to worsening reflux. And we'll also be discussing some other reasons someone might have reflux. Let's get started. So there are a lot of reasons today why someone might experience acid reflux. And today I'm gonna to be sharing seven reasons with you. Number one, would be due to low magnesium. When your magnesium is too low, it can cause your lower esophageal sphincter, the LES, to spasm. Now, a lot of Americans today are very, very depleted in magnesium, and there's many reasons for this. One has to do with the state of our soil. Two is because of a recent event, a lot of people have been high dosing vitamin D, not realizing that you need magnesium to convert vitamin D to its final form. And so a lot of clients I've seen are high dosing on vitamin D supplementation and when we go to check their magnesium, it's completely depleted. I highly suggest treating and testing your magnesium levels before thinking about vitamin D. Make sure that you are taking magnesium with it because again, you need magnesium to optimally use vitamin D in your body. And so a lot of times what happens is people go on these high dose supplements and end up with a lot of symptoms and it's because their magnesium is being depleted. One way to check this is through a blood test called RBC magnesium. Typical conventional medicine testing does serum magnesium, but the RBC magnesium test is actually a lot more accurate. The reason you want to be mindful of your magnesium stores is because when your magnesium is too low, it causes muscle spasms. When your muscles spasm, that also includes your LES, and so that can be a contributing factor to chronic acid reflux. So if you are experiencing symptoms like that, I highly recommend you look into your magnesium status. If you find that you're low in magnesium, I have an entire post on different forms of magnesium. My favorite that I feel like people really tolerate well is called magnesium glycinate. If you're constipated, you might want to lean towards magnesium citrate, but people tend to really tolerate magnesium glycinate really well. And I like it if you also have anxiety because it helps nourish your nervous system. Again, none of this is me medical advice. You really wanna take these suggestions and go into your primary provider and run this by them so that they can look at all of your medications and make sure nothing interacts with each other. So number two, the second reason someone might experience chronic reflux is because we're really bad at slowing down and chewing our food. When I was a floor nurse, I would just have maybe five minutes to eat sometimes because we were so busy and understaffed that I would just shove all my food in my mouth and hardly chew and just swallow and then I'd be like, oh, I'm so bloated. Must be the dairy, it must be the gluten. <laughs> and yes, dairy and gluten can cause bloating, but sometimes we need to realize what we're doing prior to eating. Are we sitting down and taking a few deep breaths and just calming down before we gulp down our lunch? Typically, no. A lot of people these days don't give themselves enough time to eat and yes, it's due to chronic low staffing in the medical system, but even in the business world, a lot of times people will just rush through lunch or even eat their lunch while they are watching a presentation or something. It's really important to start slowing down and actually being present during a meal and chewing your food because it helps your body kick on your parasympathetic nervous system. And when you do that, that stimulates digestion and helps your body start to actually digest your food. Otherwise, when you're trying to eat in a stressed state, why would your body want to absorb food if it feels like it's running for its life? Typically it doesn't, and that's why you end up feeling really bloated after a meal, and that is why a lot of people end up experiencing reflux. Number three, a third reason, if you are someone that experiences chronic reflux and you're eating two to three hours before bedtime, you might want to reevaluate that because when you are eating and then you're laying down and you're allowing your muscles to relax to go to bed, that includes your LES. And remember, we talked about what can happen when your LES is relaxing. It will let food back in and cause a reflux reaction if you have a ton of food in your stomach. 
That's not to say never to eat a bedtime snack. I actually encourage my clients to eat a bedtime snack if they struggle with waking around 2 or 3 a.m. because that's usually a sign that your glucose is dropping too low and you need a bedtime snack. So if you're someone that experiences that, make sure that your bedtime snack isn't something really hearty and heavy that is going to cause you to experience reflux before you go to bed. Number four, be aware of certain medication triggers. Some medications, including antihypertensive drugs like calcium channel blockers or things like benzos that are given for anxiety and depression, often lead to chronic reflux. If you're someone that is experiencing chronic reflux, make sure you don't jump to stomach acid and just take Tums because remember we covered it's not stomach acid. It needs to be something else addressed because if you start to address your stomach acid and you dilute it and you're someone that already struggles with anxiety and depression on top of that, you're worsening it because you won't be absorbing nutrients you need for your neurotransmitters. So make sure you are evaluating any current medications that you're on and looking to see if they cause side effects like reflux. Number five, avoid consuming foods that irritate your LES. And this doesn't have to be forever. Generally, people have to avoid these types of things while healing their gut lining, which we'll talk about in video three. But once they end up healing their gut lining, a lot of people are able to add these types of foods back in. But you may need to eliminate them while you are going on a healing journey and trying to figure out the root cause to your reflux. These types of foods include tomato sauce, citrus juices, spicy foods, a lot of black tea, um, soda, especially diet soda tends to be an irritant for a lot of people, alcohol, fried food, and chocolate. Sometimes just eliminating these for a little while can really give someone drastic improvement. So it's always important to kind of evaluate your food choices and see what sets your reflux off and try to eliminate it for a while. Also be aware that there are a lot of inflammatory oils being used in our food today that tend to trigger symptoms. These include things like canola oil, soybean oil, vegetable oil, palm oil. When we are consuming high amounts of those, it can contribute to a lot of symptoms in our body. When those oils are cooked to a high temperature, they become rancid and then when we eat them, it leads to a lot of inflammation in our body. And it's kind of a root cause that many people overlook, but I've actually tested this out in clinic and I've had a patient come to me with symptoms and I've said, hey, go home, switch your oil, start cooking with ghee or lard and start using olive oil and see if you notice a difference. And they came back and they got rid of all their vegetable oil, the palm oil that they were using and cooking with, and they switched oils and noticed a huge improvement. So sometimes it's really the small things that can lead to the greatest difference in our God-designed bodies. Now, I'm not saying become obsessive with those types of things, but definitely cut them out if you're experiencing a lot of symptoms of GERD while you are seeking to heal your gut lining. I will talk about ways to heal your gut lining in video three, but just worth mentioning the inflammatory oils and how damaging they can truly be. Number six, if you are living in a chronic state of stress, this is a root cause of your GERD. You can do all the gut healing protocols in the world. You can do all the fancy detoxes. You can eliminate all of your foods, but if you are becoming obsessive about avoiding toxins in your food, if you are living in a chronic state of stress in a job that you hate, if you are constantly feeling just triggered and irritated by everyone around you, you're experiencing chronic stress. And when your body is in a chronic state of stress, it is in a chronic state of fight or flight. And the last thing your body wants to do when it is stressed is digest food. When you're experiencing chronic stress, it not only impacts your entire digestive system, but it also impacts all your minerals in your body and you start to burn through them, especially things like magnesium. We have something called a magnesium burn rate. I have an entire blog article on it on my website if you want to go ahead and check that out. But when you are failing to address your stress and your triggers and not doing anything about them, this is a common contributor to things like LES spasms and chronic reflux. I did an entire course on nervous system regulation because I began to see that it was a true root cause to a lot of chronic problems that my clients were facing. So if you're interested in taking that course, I do have a link to it in the bottom of this video in the comment section. Number seven, food sensitivities. Food sensitivities can be unknown for a long time in someone's life until they start to test for it or do something like an elimination diet. Now, again, I'm not someone who thinks that you should go on a crazy restrictive diet for life. 
But for the purpose of healing, you may need to eliminate things like gluten and dairy for a little while just to see how your body responds to getting those out of your diet. And then eventually, once you start healing your gut lining, you can add those things back in. I have seen clients go on a very restrictive diet for the purpose of healing their gut lining and then eventually be able to add their favorite foods back in. So it's not a life sentence, but it's definitely something to be mindful of when you are trying to heal things like acid reflux. Now, if these seven things fail and you still feel like you're experiencing chronic reflux, here are three other bonus things that you can look into. Number one, a hiatal hernia. Some people can have this and it will cause them to experience chronic reflux. But again, even when you have something like this, you really wanna focus on healing your gut lining, not just suppressing the stomach acid. This can be diagnosed by something like an x-ray and you would need to follow up with your primary care doctor for plans to approach this. I would encourage you to see a functional practitioner if you are wanting to go through with root cause healing because typically in conventional medicine, they're not really trained to look for a root cause and they will put you on protonics. Number two in our bonus is H. pylori. This is a bacteria that if it is overgrown, it can lead to a lot of stomach issues, including reflux. It can also lead to a lot of stomach pain and it can be a root cause that is often missed. You can do a breath test or a blood test one test that I really love to look for all types of overgrowth and really get a whole understanding of your entire microbiota is called a GI map. And I will include a link at the bottom if you want to look at the different things that it tests for and schedule an appointment with a functional provider to evaluate something like this. It can be really informative. But again, you really want to make sure that your foundations are in place by going through all of those seven things we talked about previously before doing something expensive like a GI map because it is expensive. And a lot of times you can reverse these types of symptoms without having to do the expensive testing right away. And then number three, insufficient stomach acid. You can either have too little stomach acid or if you're dealing with something like a duodenal ulcer, you might, want, you might have to address your stomach acid for a little while while again healing your gut lining. When it comes to insufficient stomach acid, a lot of people benefit from a supplement called HCL and an HCL trial or digestive enzymes and digestive bitters. Those are not something that you ever want to take without figuring out the state of your gut lining first because it can burn through your gut lining if you already have an issue with it. But again, these are just things that you can look into and talk to a functional provider about, or if you are on a self-healing journey, make sure that you are doing your research and really running this through your primary care provider before implementing anything. Again, none of this is medical advice. I just want to include things like this for educational purposes because I see a lot of false information out there and a lot of people settling for symptoms that can be reversed. In our next video, we will be discussing natural ways to heal your gut lining. Let me know in the comment section if you found value in this and make sure you stay tuned for our next video by subscribing to this channel and liking this video. I'll see you later. Bye.